Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and today we are going to be looking at Flaming Dragon, the 150 gram dual weapon plastic ant- wait, wow, that's a lot of things. Uh, it is also the robot that I designed as a very, very young child, about eight years old, uh, and finally brought to life a little while ago uh, here on the channel, and we've fought it recently, and it had a few problems. So. Uh, we're going to take this thing and we're going to upgrade it. We're going to make sure that uh, none of these problems ever hit us again. And yeah, we're just going to make this whole thing a little bit better. So how exactly do we do that? Because the problem that we've got right now is one of a balancing act. Uh, the design of this thing is, at the moment, fairly true to the original design that I did when I was a child, uh, other than the fact that it's missing two weapons. It's supposed to have flippers out either side, but this thing is already 150 grams, so there was no way we were going to add two extra weapons to this system. Um, but this design is pretty much exactly how it went down on the page all those years ago. Uh, and now I want to do some upgrades, but I also want to keep it true to the original design. So there's a few things that we can change and tweak and I think we're going to keep the design true to life-ish or true to the original as much as possible while upgrading the things that I would have upgraded at that point in time if I had the knowledge that I have now or at least some of it anyway. So the first thing I wanted to do was at the moment we have two N20 motors in here which if I pull that stuff out. There's two N20 DF Robotics N20 motors in the middle here, which are a nice light solution for doing this type of thing. Uh, these guys, mm, not the greatest, <laughs> basically because at the moment they're driving a gear, which is then driving the two outer wheels. So compared to my original control system for robots, these, this comes in backwards because, of course, the gear turns the wheels in the opposite direction to itself. So, uh, at the moment, all of this stuff is a little bit messed up uh, and it doesn't actually drive correctly. So, I can either uh, change the controller that's in here, or change the receiver that's in here, change the controller, set a new mode on my controller, and do everything in software, or we can do things in hardware. Because the other problem that we're having was that these wheels were threading themselves on and off the bolts, which meant that from time to time we were losing our wheels. They were pushing too far out and they were getting disengaging from the gear and uh, yeah, it would mess everything up. So there's a couple of things that we can do to stop this. One, I've put some hot glue into these wheel guards to stop the wheels from being able to move too far out, but we can print these in shorter but two, if we move the motors so that the motor drives a wheel and then we have two, a free floating gear and a free floating back wheel, A, not only will the motors now be going in the right direction for what I want, which means uh, no extra controller messing around, no extra modes in my controller, any of that type of stuff, uh, but also there will be no way for at least one drive wheel to ever come disengaged, which means we'll always have drive down one side. Even if we don't have dual drive, we'll have at least one side of drive. Now, the problem with this, as you can probably see in here, is we can't put the motors at the same point because if we push this motor forwards and try and push this motor forwards, then it interrupts all of the stuff for the weapon mount, which is what this is here. We can't move this motor forwards and we can't move this motor backwards because it hits the weapon servo. So we're actually going to have to go one up and one down, uh, which means this thing is going to be a little bit interesting in terms of packing on through the inside. Uh, but I think that's the only way I can do that. Now, the next and final and probably actually only thing that we can really change or I want to change in this video is the spinner. We have a very, very spiky four bar spinner, which is terrible <laughs> uh, because the four bar spinner on a very fast motor means that this thing has next to no bite and uh, it means that whenever we spin it up and hit somebody, it just kind of grinds into them. So I want to redo all of this, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to keep the spikiness, but only like drop down to a single tooth bar because the motor that we're running on this guy out the back here is just too fast for anything other than a single tooth bar to make any sense. Uh, the other problem we have with weapon engagement is 
the design doesn't have any kind of feeder wedges or anything like that, uh, which I, I like the front wall because that is what I originally designed, but I, I think I can kind of cheese a little bit of a feeder wedge in here without changing the shape of this 3D print at all. So the, the, the design stays looking similar to the original uh, drawings that I did, but also we can actually get a little bit more bite on the weapon. So let's, uh, let's 3D print this thing. Now, I am thinking that now we're doing some upgrades. Uh, I wanna go just, just a little bit more flashy, a little bit more ostentatious with this. So uh, I have an idea of how I'm gonna print this. And this is about as ostentatious as it gets. We are looking at Poly Alchemy Elixir Copper as a, uh, a chassis here. And oh my gosh, I am, I just, I love this stuff. I don't print combat robot chassis in it basically ever because uh, this stuff is very, very nice and kind of expensive and combat robots are designed to get beaten up and broken. But going into the B League, uh, this thing's not gonna get beaten up quite as badly. So I figured it was time to uh, crack out the Poly Alchemy Elixir and make a very, very cool, sleek, shiny looking uh, combat robot. So here we are. now. The big thing with this is that I loved the red and the green that I had going on over here in the first version. Uh, but green and copper, yeah, that's, it's not, it's not really, uh, not really a good combination of colors. But it is October right now and copper is orange. So uh, we could go a little bit spooky with this. Yeah, that's right, we are going copper and black and uh, oh, the weapon bar has jumped off the table along with a gear. Um, but so we're going to be doing black and copper and oh, I think this is going to look awesome. If we drop these in here and then throw the ax up the back. Yeah, hang on, Oop, flick that around there. Check that out. Ah, oh, this is gonna look so good. Now right, I need to uh, get those things now. Oh, I don't have, uh, Motor mounts. That's awkward because I've got two little motor mounts in here which are different to the regular motor mounts I run. These are shorter uh, and lighter. Uh, so I will be right back. Cool, so that should be everything we need to get going and now we just need to grab some tools to pull this guy apart, uh, which should be about all I need, I think, because uh, we are just gonna try and do a one-for-one -one swap. Also, I will say, here we go. So we do have a single tooth weapon design. Uh, there's not a whole lot of bite on it in terms of actual distance between this radius and that radius, but it should be more than enough to do damage and hit things a little bit better than the old one. So let's get everything uh, put together. Ugh, that was a bit of a pain. I really, really need to stop relying on hot glue uh, because yeah, some of that stuff was literally just hot glued in and getting it out was very annoying. Uh, having said that, I'm probably gonna hot glue some pieces of uh, this thing back together because while it can be annoying to take apart, it does make life easier when putting things together. So, you know, bit of a trade off realistically. Come on out. There we go. Uh, so this is our, our ax and yeah, we've got hot glue in here as well. Uh, so that's gonna be a bit of a problem. Maybe, hopefully I can just pick this stuff out. I don't know, I'll do that off camera in a second. I just also wanna double check because I had two versions of this. Okay, this is the, the original version, that's cool. Um, 
All right, but that is all of our bits. Uh, and I'll get the servo horn on in a second, I think. Uh, but the next thing we actually need is a three mil bolt because one of the things you might've seen in that time-lapse is I had to undo these uh, nylon bolts with pliers because uh, trying to get nylon bolts to self tap into plastic doesn't work. They make this eeky horrible sound and they don't do it. So we're going to tap with a three mil bolt first and then we're gonna go in and uh, put the nylon bolts in. I also might cut the nylon bolts down a little bit, so if I can save a little bit of weight uh, on them. But just by like threading this guy right through, can you even see that on this camera? Um, yeah, so just by threading these bolts straight through, that'll give the nylon bolts a thread to hold on to, uh, and we'll be good from here. So that one's done. Now, if I throw this nylon bolt into that same hole, oh, oh, aha, there we go. Okay, so it just took a little bit to actually get it to go, and now I've got it in. Nice. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is get the, uh, the servo done because the servo is actually the first thing that needs to go in because once the wheels are in, it's impossible to screw the servo horn down. So that's a bit annoying. So we need to get rid of that or get that done first. And we are almost there. I love how this thing is looking right now. So the final bits to do are electronics packing and putting a cover on here. I think I'm just gonna go clear plastic because I really, really like the look of this thing right now. Like, check it out. It is so shiny and the contrast is so nice. There you can see uh, the front weapon too. Pretty decent, it seems to have a decent amount of reach. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna put a cover on here of some variety and then we're gonna have a bit of a test I reckon. Quick little change of plans because I weighed this guy up and we're sitting at 130 something grams uh, so I've decided to do something that I rarely ever do on this channel printed a top plate. <laughs> uh, so this guy should sit in over here and just kind of make everything look a whole lot better and a whole lot neater. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, that's so good. <sighs> Why don't I print top plates for other things? No, it's a waste of weight. We're not doing that. We're not getting into the, the printing top plates game. Uh, other than this guy. This guy deserves a nice little top plate. Uh, the other thing too, I did mention at the start having some extra wedges out the front and I was thinking about putting on uh, some acetate wedges, just some like really basic somethings. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do that anymore. I'm gonna give this guy a quick test in a second. And once I've done the test, I'll work out if the acetate is uh, the way to go.
that was a lot better. Actually, a lot, lot better. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. I was able to control the drive a lot more, a lot easier. Uh, I think one of the two motors in here is wearing a little bit because uh, when I was pushing straight forwards, it was not going straight forwards. I was getting a slight turn in one direction. Uh, so I believe that, yeah, we've got some issues with that, but that's okay. We should just be able to replace a motor and it should be okay, uh, which is great. Uh, yeah, I was really, really happy with that. We did damage too. I mean, check this out. So sure, they're more scuff marks than anything else, but that's what you get in plastic ants. I mean, it's not without its price. Uh, the weapon also took some damage. And yeah, that's something I'm gonna need to fix. I'm gonna have to change this weapon back to a conventional impacted type weapon because the nice little finny teeth, like pointy teeth on the edge of it, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't work. They melt and uh, it throws the whole thing out of balance. So you saw there, uh, when I was doing that fight, or mock fight, that uh, when I was spinning the weapon hard at the end there, it was kind of vibrating and shaking the whole robot. And it, the whole robot was kind of like uh, drifting a little bit. That was, yeah, because the weapon had hit something and then got itself out of balance. So I need to do a better job with the weapon, basically. But I'll do that between this video and the next fight, which I think is November at this point. Uh, also, I'm pretty happy with how close the weapon is to the ground, so I'm gonna try and run without feeder wedges, at least for a fight, and if I need them, then I'll put those acetate feeder wedges on that I was talking about, uh, yeah, kind of in the middle of the video there. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one. I, I love, love the new look of this thing. It's very Halloween and just very, very cool. Uh, I really do like this, uh, this poly alchemy stuff, but like I said, it's a little bit too expensive to be putting into uh, combat robots that are gonna get completely destroyed. It's also heavy because it's a PLA. So uh, yeah, only this guy will get the, uh, the special poly alchemy treatment. Everybody else can stick to ABS, I think. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.